Hey everyone, it's Ashley with Big World Young Feet, and one day I'm going to explain where I got that name, but today I am here to talk about a book that I just finished reading yesterday and I so enjoyed that I definitely wanted to share with everyone. Um, it is called The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Googe. Bookish Princess has recommended this book a couple times over on her chan uh, channel. She recommended it enough that I picked it up and read it, and I'm so, so glad that I did. It is such a delightful book. Uh, it's a pretty quick read. It's not it's not overly complicated or difficult, um, but very fun and very heartwarming and touching. And I'm a little sad I hadn't heard about it before. Definitely made me want to pick up more Elizabeth Googe and get more into her writing. She's a beautiful writer and this was a wonderful, fun story that I truly recommend to everybody, especially if you love fun fairy tale adventure type stories. So. The Little White Horse, the main character is named Mariah Merriweather. At the opening of the novel, she's 13 and she has just been orphaned. She is sent along with her governess to live with her cousin, Sir Benjamin, at his manor house called Moonacre. And it's all the way across the country. She's never heard of it before. And when she gets there, you know, she's moving from London to Moonacre and the environment is so different. It's very rural and pastoral. And it's almost like you're, she's been transported into a fairyland. The, the way Elizabeth Googe describes the village and the setting, it feels exactly like a fairy tale. They're not just trees, but they're magical, beautiful trees with lots of mystery around them. It's not just a field, but it's a field filled with frolicking lambs and that almost seem to be able to communicate with, with the people in the village. So when she gets to Moonacre and spends a little time with Sir Benjamin, she begins to uncover the truth about her family story and, and their fa her family legacy, which is so deeply connected to the legacy of the village and all of the characters in it. I almost lost a few plot points because I had didn't think that a character was going to be important. They turned out to be extremely important later. So every character by the end of the novel is important to the main story. So pay attention to those when you're reading. It's almost like a mystery. It's fun to keep up with and to kind of learn as Mariah learns what the truth of her family and her village is. So I'm not going to give too much away of the plot because it's all very interconnected and one thing leads to another. Just know that she's definitely uncovering a family mystery and a family history at the same time. And it puts her in a situation where she has to grow up a little bit. She, uh, Mariah at the beginning of the novel is a little vain, a little conceited, very curious to the point of rudeness. And by the end of the novel, she's grown into a very mature, selfless woman who's been very brave and courageous to save the village that she now is a part of. And she's very much a part of it by the end of the novel. This is a little bit of a mystery, definitely some mystery elements you learn with Mariah uh, as she goes, you learn along with her. Lots and lots of fairy tale elements. Everything's very beautiful and and whimsical and almost otherworldly in the way that it's told. Animals are a big part of this story. The animals are not just pets or just farm animals. They, they're they very much characters in their own right. And um, they have personalities, very strong personalities, and they have wishes and desires. They're some of the most fun characters in the book. So it's definitely got lots and lots of strong fairy tale elements to it. It's an adventure story at its heart. Mariah and her friend Robin, young that they are, they team up and they work together um, they solve problems and they save the village. There's men on horseback and there's adventures into the night and they are very brave and courageous by the novel's end. So all those three genres wrapped up in one very, very delightful story. And there's a really healthy dose of Christian motif and symbolism in this book as well. It's definitely not as strong as something like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, of course, but it is there and it's a strong and I would say important part of the novel as well. You can read the story for just the story's sake, but it definitely is enriched by the kind of Christian symbolism or allusion to Christian, Christian stories and symbols um, that go back into the, into the novel. The writing itself is delightful. Elizabeth Gugin is an amazing writer and I'm definitely going to be checking out some more of her books after this one just for her, her beautiful use of language. It's very fun and light language, but at the same time it's there's weight to it and there's gravitas. And the story means something. There's definitely a message to be taken away. Her storytelling is clear. The pacing was perfect. It never got, never felt too slow or never felt too fast. She just beautifully kind of held her hand through the whole novel and just kind of took you through Mariah's story gracefully and very seamlessly and very behind the scenes. And the writing in this book is so clear and at times even piercing where it just kind of stopped me in my tracks. I was like, wow, that, that means something, not just in the context of the story, but uh, in our own lives. So for example, um, at one point the parson or the preacher character is speaking to Mariah about her family history. And he says, are you quite sure that you want to hear it? He asked, meaning the story of her family history. Sometimes Mariah, a story that one hears starts one off doing things that one would not have had to do if one had not heard it. 
And that's so true. Like sometimes you just, you learn something or you discover something about yourself or about the world and it compels you to action that you kind of almost kind of wish you hadn't heard because it means you could have continued about your merry way. And books do that to us all the time, right? Or at least the good ones do. Um, but in addition to being very serious at times, it's also very funny and very light. There's lots of little jokes and plays on words. So every time there's a really serious moment, there seems to be something more light to kind of counterbalance that, that weightiness, which was very fun and very charming. And the plot also returns to itself over and over again. So I almost missed a couple plot points because I had gotten a little bit lazy in my reading. So as light and fun as this is, you definitely don't want to get too confident in your reading skills and skip right past it. But at the end of the novel, the narrator actually kind of calls out a lazy reader like myself and says, it may have been noticed by the intelligent reader that old Parson and Miss Heliotrope did not put in an appearance at the tea party. Well, I of course had not noticed that because I was out on the last couple pages and was so excited to be done that I missed it completely. So I appreciated that little call out to slow down and pay attention and enjoy it. It's really savor every word that I liked that little call out. There's a bit of, there's a, a fair bit of that, which I really appreciated. The characters in The Little White Horse are wonderful and fun and extremely well developed. Of course, Mariah is the main character and she's definitely one of my favorites. You get to watch her grow up in the course of this novel, not necessarily in age years, but in maturity level and compassion and understanding her role in the community and in the village. Her friend Robin is delightful and fun and almost like a Peter Pan type character. Very adventurous and, and mysterious and some people don't even think that he exists because he's so unique and fun. Miss Heliotrope is a, another wonderful character. She is Mariah's governess and she's very austere and stern. At the beginning of the novel, kind of your stereotypical depiction of a governess, uh, very you know pulled back hair and very boring drab clothes. Um, but she's very tender and has, another, has a fun story, her fun backstory of her own that you get to discover. The village and the, the town itself becomes an, a character on its own. I talked a little bit about the animals and how they're definitely their own characters. The village does this too. Kind of collectively, the villagers become a voice and a presence that has impact on the story. And it's very, very homey and very cozy to watch that unfold and, and learn about them. My one complaint, and it's a, it's a small one. So Moonacre, when Mariah and Miss Heliotrope go to live in it, it's inhabited only by men uh, and they make comments repeatedly throughout the novel about how they don't like women. And this is supposed to be a throwback to kind of the fall, the fall of the estate. And it is definitely meant to be a very strong connection to the fall of paradise and the Adam and Eve story um, and how women were supposed to be like the destructor of Moonacre. Even though it was the men character, the male characters decades ago that caused all the problems, but somehow the, the men that live in Moonacre presently are blaming the women for it. And at the end, they do come around and they go, well, we like women now, but you get the sense that it's still very much just Mariah and Miss Heliotrope that, that are redeemed and women as a whole are still male characters find distasteful. And I just didn't feel like that was resolved as strongly or as neatly as everything else in the novel was. And it just kind of rubbed my fur the wrong way, I guess. It's forgiven for the rest of the novel and how good the rest of the novel is. And maybe, again, maybe I was just a lazy reader and kind of missed the resolution of that. But that was the only part. If I had to give a complaint, that was the only thing that I didn't like. But everything else in this book was simply beautiful and very fun and delightful to read. I'm definitely going to recommend it to a lot of people. And I recommend it to you. I hope you read it and hope you pick it up. That was A Little White Horse by Elizabeth Gouge.